Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, it's Art Sinesso, and this month is Pride Month, a whole month dedicated to acknowledging the LGBTQ plus community and a time for the community to come together as a whole and show support for all their fellow community members. This year, I decided to take on a series in honor of the spirit of Pride to highlight some real trailblazers of the community. So all month I'll be working on a series of drawings of inspirational members of the LGBTQ plus community. I compiled this list uh, based upon some fellow friends recommendations in the community. Uh, they cited these people as inspirations to themselves and others. So anyone is fair game, historical figures, celebrities, YouTubers, artists, anyone that uh, myself or my friends find to be like real trailblazers or inspirations to others in the community. I'm going to be trying to do a drawing at least every other day. And to those of you that are looking at your calendar and seeing that it's already June 3rd, um, I can explain. I actually spent the first two days of June planning this out and getting all my ideas down for this series. And then also my little brother finally graduated from high school on June 1st. So things were a little crazy and I didn't get to start this right away. But I am starting it today and I'm beginning the series with Sappho. For those of you that don't know her, Sappho was a lyrical poet from ancient Greece that just so happened to be a big ol' lesbian. <laughs> she was not shy of her love and admiration for women. Her poetry was, back then, really well known and is still incredibly well known. She's cited as one of the best uh, poets from ancient Greece. Sappho was from the island of Lesbos and therefore was known fully as Sappho of Lesbos. And if you're thinking that the word lesbos sounds very close to the word lesbian, that's because that's where we get this word from. The word lesbian is derived from the name of the Greek island that was once Sappho's home, and that association with female same-sex attraction comes from Sappho herself. So that's why we refer to fellow women that love other women as lesbians. Sappho was an incredibly prolific poet, and scholars believe she wrote more, somewhere around 10,000 lines in her lifetime, which is insane. Unfortunately, however, much of her poetry is lost and only exists in fragments. In fact, it's said that the only surviving poem that we actually have is a poem entitled The Ode to Aphrodite, in which Sappho and or the speaker calls on the help of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, in pursuit of someone that the speaker and or Sappho is in love with. The poem is so beautiful and it's heartbreaking to read and know that it's the only complete work that we have from this incredibly romantic and artistic woman. But even from this, scholars and artists are able to cite her admiration for her fellow women. Many of the fragments of poems that we do have read as an intense love and lust and longing for women that Sappho herself were associated with. Despite this though, there are still many old, old scholars that try to debate her sexuality. Despite this though, there are several members of the community that absolutely cite Sappho as a very artistic and intelligent member of the gay community. So now to talk about the drawing for a little bit, um, in starting this drawing, I really wanted to include two things, and one was the blue violets that are behind her. This might seem a little out of place for some, but they actually have a great significance. You see, lesbians and bisexual women used to give violets to the women they were wooing, and it was meant to symbolize and show their sapphic desire. Sapphic is another word we get from Sappho, which basically just means the womanly desire for another woman. This giving of violets was a common practice in the 1900s, but Sappho herself also described herself and her lover wearing crowns of violets in one of the remaining fragments of her poems that we have. Since this had such a symbolic significance, I really wanted to work them into this drawing. I also decided to include a scroll in here because it just felt the most appropriate due to her writing being such a huge part of who she was. This gave me also a perfect place to put a quote for her as well, that, but all must be ventured in the center of the scroll. This is actually a quote from a fragment entitled Fragment 315, and it just really spoke to me for this drawing for some reason. So I had to include it. And then of course, I really wanted to make that scroll the color of the lesbian pride flag. I want to incorporate the various pride flags in each drawing of these trailblazers, and this scroll just gave me a perfect place to put it for the Sappho drawing. I think the overall biggest challenge in this drawing, though, was actually drawing Sappho herself. It was hard, because... We have no actual reliable portrait of Sappho's appearance, none of them have survived, so I had no way of knowing what she actually looked like in the past. Um, however, though, I actually drew her for Pride um, last year, and when I drew her that first time, I did as much research as I possibly could to get a general feel of what she would look like back then. I think the overall design last year came out okay, so I just kind of reworked it and decided to use it again for this drawing here. Uh, Overall, I'm not quite sure how to end this first speed paint video, but I, I will say this. 
No matter what scholars want to say about who she was and her sexuality, Sappho has become a symbol for female homosexuality all over the world. She may have passed away a long, long time ago in the archaic times, but her brilliant and romantic mind still resonates today with other women who feel the same intense love and passion for women that she did. There is still a bit of speed paint left here to see, so I think the best way to end this video for me is to read all of her complete poem, The Ode to Aphrodite, for all of you. Please keep in mind that this is meant to be a lyrical poem, so it's meant to be sung and accompanied by music. Um, I'm not going to be doing that though, because one, you don't, you really, really, really don't want to hear me sing for you. I, I'm not a good singer. Um, <laughs> it's just, you don't want it. And two, I just, I don't have the means to do it anyway. But anyway, the following is Sappho's Ode to Aphrodite. Deathless Aphrodite, throned in flowers, daughter of Zeus, O oh, terrible enchantress. With this sorrow, with this anguish, break my spirit, lady, not longer. Hear anew the voice, O oh, hear and listen. Come, as in that island dawn thou camest, billowing in thy yoked car to Sappho, forth from thy father's. Golden house in pity! I remember, fleet and fair, thy sparrows drew thee, beating fast their wings above the dusky harvest, down the pale heavens, lightning anon! And thou, O oh blessed and brightest, smiling with immortal eyelids, asked me, Maiden, what betideth thee, or wherefore callest upon me? What is here that longing more than other, here in this mad heart? And who the lovely one, beloved, that will else lure to loving? Sappho, who wrongs thee? See, if now she flies, she soon must follow. Yes, if spurting gifts she soon must offer. Yes, if loving not, she soon must love thee. How so unwilling? Come again to me, O oh now, release me, and the great pang, and all my heart desireth. Now fulfillment, fulfill, O oh Aphrodite, fight by my shoulder. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to check back in a few days for the next person on my list of trailblazers. Just to give a little teaser, the next person I'll be doing a drawing of is Lara Jane Grace of Against Me. In the meantime, I love you all and I hope you have an awesome day.